Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the weak law of large numbers. Let's suppose that x1, x2, xn, etc. is an iid sequence of random variables. So they're independent and identically distributed. Then the limit as n goes to infinity of the probability that x1 plus x2 plus xn, so the sum of the first n of them, divided by n minus the expected value of x1 an absolute value, the probability that this expression is bigger than or equal to epsilon tends to zero as, or is equal to zero, because so I have a limit over there, so it's equal to zero for any epsilon greater than zero. For any epsilon greater than zero. And so let's get a sense of this. What we're going to do is, well, let's consider the random variable Zn, and what is Zn? So Zn is going to be x1 plus x2 plus xn, all divided by n. And so what's the expected value of Zn? The expected value of Zn is going to be the expected value of x1 plus the expected value of x2 plus the expected value of xn divided by n by the linearity of the expected value. So this follows from the linearity of expected value. That's the linear of expected value. And let's find the variance of zn. So the variance of zn will be equal to what can we know is what's one other thing we can notice about the expected value of Zn? Each of these things are the same because they're identically distributed. So we can simplify this just to the expected value of x1, since they have the same distribution. Now the variance of Zn by the same principle, by the fact that they're independent, is going to be 1 over n squared. I can pull that constant out. And then I'm going to have the sum of the variances, the variance of x1. Again, that follows from the independence of these random variables, the variance of xn. And now, since they have the same distribution, I can write this as 1 over n squared, and then n times the variance of x1. And so this will be equal to the variance of x1 over n. And so now what we can do is we see that, well, this is my random variable zn, and this is the expected value of zn. So I can write this, the limit, as n goes to infinity, of the probability that x1 plus, plus xn over n minus the expected value of x1 bigger than or equal to lambda is the same thing as the limit as n goes to infinity of the probability that the absolute value of zn minus the expected value of zn is bigger than or equal to lambda. And now we can use the Chebyshev inequality. This is less than or equal to by Chebyshev's inequality. The limit as n goes to infinity of the variance of zn over epsilon. But this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. The variance of zn is the variance of x1 over n. So this is going to be the variance of x1 over n times epsilon. And we do a lambda squared over here. So this is going to be a, uh, I put a lambda here. We really want what? We really would like an epsilon. So let's change these lambdas to epsilons. So those lambdas become epsilons. 
epsilon, epsilon, and chubby Jeff has an epsilon squared in the denominator, so put an epsilon squared over here. It won't change our limit, but we just want to be consistent with our previous notation. And so now what we have here is as long as the variance of x1 is finite, as n goes to infinity, epsilon squared is a fixed number, so this limit is equal to zero. So with this strong, or this, and this is referred to as the weak law of large numbers. And what the weak law of large numbers says, it says the statistical average of the first n random variables subtracted off from its mean gets very, very small in probability. So on average, the statistical average converges to the expected value in the probabilistic sense. Thank you very much.